But we've already seen live chat point out, you know, single click is the path of sociopaths. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe, Brian, and everybody <laughs> sitting around, maybe running away from bread while watching us live <laughs> yes. on Twitch. Uh, <laughs> I guess I need to go ahead and hop into, we have our super secret Discord. You can hop into that if you are a Twitch subscriber or a patron, but I want to get our live audio up. Uh, live audio, if I click that, there you guys go. There you go. <laughs> I got to remember to do that because I went through the trouble of making sure that's set up for each and every show. I'm always messing around with the audio configurations, and this week is no exception. So if anything sounds weird and explodes, there is your warning, but it should be listenable. It should be sane explosions you're like yeah that sounds really off but it's perfectly balanced as all things should be so i want to start right off at the top of the show mm -hmm. about something i've been working on since tuesday and i don't typically do and that's the steps that everybody goes through when you're rebuilding your linux rig your linux machine your mm -hmm. primary system that you use day in and day out because we all have different strategies from doing it right yes absolutely and like Threadbooper Stale, because I went through this with Jackbox. Now, typically what I do is I image everything. I get everything running, image it, and we're good to go. Something ever goes amiss, what do I do? Just pop that image back on, we're good to go. What happens over the years with, especially Threadbooper, it has had the same Debian install since Debian 10, which mm -hmm. we're at Debian 12. Yeah. Now, for you Arch users, for Ubuntu users, for Fedora users, like, well, what? That, that's a couple of weeks, right? That's not a big deal. When you think of Debian, we're talking two, four, coming up on six years. Things get crafty, even under Linux, not, not to Windows extends. No, 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 no. But they do. You, you get junk built up in your home directory. You get the libraries that you've installed to compile things, and things can get a little squirrely. You probably got something if you have a long running install that you've had for a couple of years, you're like, yeah, that probably doesn't work quite like it should, but you know what? It's good enough. So what I did is something I haven't done in a while is doing a clean install from backups, which mm -hmm. is a lot more work than you would think. <gasps> now, what do you use for backups these days? Me, I'm old, I'm lazy. I like convenient stuff. Huge fan of a GUI tool. Deja Dupe. Oh, yeah, Deja Dupe is excellent. I use that too. <laughs> it just works. I, yeah. I, the entire time I'm using this, I'm like, this is too easy. This is just too easy. You know, <laughs> you point it at a directory or folders that you want, usually your home directory. Don't so, like back this up, put it in a folder, move that over to another machine, replicate it. You're good to go. So I did a clean install of Debian 12, probably like three o'clock on uh, <laughs> Tuesday morning, somewhere in there. And I, I got this process underway. And I wanted to do this for an upcoming video that I'm working on anyway. I'm like, what's the ins and outs of setting up Debian 12 versus way back in Debian 10? And I've run into stuff that has changed that I didn't see because I had these configuration files sitting around that I've already taken care of and I've forgotten because it's been so many years. So the challenge of that is not just taking all of your dot files from your home directory. This is the hard one and going, boom just dumping it in because then you have your desktop you have all your configurations and your thunar stuff yeah that took forever but going through that, that. <laughs> was a bit of an experience and i guess a debian 12 is pretty smooth out of the box what i'm curious is what is your method for doing that for doing a clean install but backing pulling from backups or however you could do or you just do everything from scratch because way back in the day we just did everything from scratch because we didn't know better or we didn't yeah. have extra storage laying around to back things up. You know, you at worst, you might have had some passwords scribbled down somewhere. You're like, oh, I'll need that and that. Or you had some handwritten notes that you've typed out. And one thing I did notice when we talk about Croft, because I build a lot of stuff on this box, I mean, it's pretty static in its base function. But I'm always, uh, especially on Debian, you run into situations where I'm like, well, this package, okay, I'm just going to have to build it from the Git repo or we're, we're not. I think it was about 48 gigabytes of question mark stuff was gone. Mm -hmm. 
like stuff that I'd installed over these years, libraries, packages, and things that I did not need to get this box back up and running 100%. So there was that advantage. But Nice. You know. Have, have more space is always good. <laughs> even though, you know, let's be honest, space isn't really an issue these days. Yeah, yeah. As I was sitting there uh, <laughs> earlier this week looking at a two terabyte VME drive. Yeah, we were checking that out. I was surprised at how, how low those have come. Yeah, two terabyte <laughs> NVMe drive, like a Samsung two tip, uh, like a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Now I'm looking at like the uh, four terabyte, four terabyte uh, SSDs are under $300 now. Nice. Did you see the drive? Uh, Samsung talked, uh, I have a picture of it on my Mastodon. I posted it earlier this week it is a 256 terabyte drive Woohoo! yeah <laughs> i did see an article about it <laughs> that's what awesome in the world that that that's that's a real number that my brain has a problem with like, what do i even do with that <laughs> but yeah that's that's been fun uh getting everything back up so if you got like a you know a weird strategy you got some hints some tips for everybody leave those in the uh comment section on the youtube video or on the odyssey video mm -hmm. let me know um i'm always interested in uh, how everybody has that strategy put together but it's good to have a clean rebuild effectively you know rebuilding everything from backups but very selectively only the bare stuff because i'm only mm -hmm. only a couple of applications and i ran into things i was talking to jill in the pre-show go back and listen to that if you're a patron like all players made a change i use also player for the show because everything's running jock also, player has a jack module plugin. You start that up. Previously, it just loaded that. It doesn't do that anymore. And if somebody had came to me and said, "Vin, I heard you use also player, and I've installed also player, and it doesn't work with Jack," what would I have told them? <laughs> it sounds like you <laughs> broke something. Yeah, because <laughs> it works for me. Tm, and now I know. Also, now I know that you got to give it an O flag with Jack for the output module now. Oh. I see. <laughs> yeah, these are things. And on top of that, I've been optimizing uh, some custom kernels because I found out that there's uh, flags for Zen 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I've been playing around with that. But that is extraordinarily boring, except for like seven people in the audience. Like, come on, give me 30 minutes of that. I'm not. I'm going to respect your time. How <laughs> about you, Joe? You got a wombo combo earlier yeah. this week, didn't you? We did. So we actually had a bit of weather here in SoCal over the weekend with Hurricane Hillary. And fortunately, here in Los Angeles, we we uh, didn't get the worst of it. It it I'm here literally, you know, within a mile of the ocean and it and it saw the cold, <laughs> cold water and went boop inland to the deserts and the high mountains. And it and it it caused a lot of damage in Palm Springs and a lot of other communities. But we were fortunate that it didn't, yeah, un unleash the worst of the wrath here in in the South Bay. <laughs> and but the but the it was a little scary. The creepy thing is we had a moderate size earthquake, you know, just above five point oh, and I, and it was just nerve wracking. Here we're we're waiting for the you know seventy eighty mile an hour winds with rain, <laughs> and then we get an earthquake. I saw a lot of those responses, and it wasn't like, you know, it was like five magnitude five earthquake. But California, yeah. they're like, eh. But it's it was not, more the like, deal. really? We got to deal with a uh, hurricane exactly. and this? And it was like, man. <laughs> it was hashtag hurricane. <laughs> I could imagine. Yeah. I could imagine. I'm glad everybody's fine. It fortunately didn't do like, you know, of yeah. course, like all the news is like, it's going to wipe out California. You know, I, be scared. I know, I know, I bet. Yeah, it was just a lot of water. And we've yeah. had, you know, we had actually a lot of rain with with the uh, the rain we had in the winter. So um, we, we're kind of getting more used to rain. <laughs> but it'd been we're a learning to bathe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good intro, but let's go ahead and hop into this. Uh, this is something that I, I just want to sit in, <laughs> outside in the audience and get some popcorn. Yes, absolutely. So the mouse click debate continues. Woohoo! The upcoming KDE Plasma 6 will require users to double click on files and folders to open them, 
instead of single clicking, which has been the default for KDE since its inception in 1996. And KDE Plasma 6 is actually built on top of QT6 and is tentatively planned uh, for release in late 2023 or early 2024. And honestly, one of the obvious reasons for the change is that universally on most Linux desktops like GNOME and XFCE, double click is default with most functions. And on other operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, you know, use the double click standard. So click behavior, of course, can be configured in KDE settings and you can change back to single click <laughs> if you like, <laughs> which, I, I will be doing, you know, actually, although many people I know already turn on double click on, in KDE as default, but I'm actually a little unique that I actually prefer single click, especially in KDE where I've been using it for so many years. I, I actually like the speed of one click and using the mouse less. And I honestly sometimes turn it on in other DEs and X window managers as well. So, you know, for, for, me, um, I understand why they're going to double click, but the single click option will always be there when I want to want to uh, activate it. <laughs> so no problem. <laughs> no problem there. So Ben, what do you think of the, uh, the mouse click debate once again? <laughs> That's not a debate. It's <laughs> yeah. not. Um, you know, we've, we've already seen live chat point out, you know, single click is the path of sociopaths. Um, <laughs> Now, this was discussed at uh, Academy, which is the gathering of the KDE humans in 2022, but everybody's like, okay, fine. That, that was the KDE teams of, like, sure, we can switch it. That's not a big deal. Yeah. But double click when using a pointing device, kids. You know, that's made sense since the invention of pointing devices. This has started off because some clever people smarter than us went, we need a buffer. We need a buffer because yeah. this human meat machine that we're all made of, we make mistakes and we make the extra clicks and extra things get opened up and the double click buys you that buffer. Now, accidentally opening something that requires a double click, Herculean effort there. You've really got to want to accidentally open something if you got to click on it twice. And I'm not saying it can not happen because this happened to me too, but it's a mm -hmm. long stretch from clicking on something one time because you do phantom clicks. Why? The meat machine will just click on things sometimes. You've done it. Don't pretend you haven't because yeah. you have. <laughs> now, Especially if you have a sensitive mouse too as well. <laughs> a mouse and you'll yeah. be hovering over the button and that, that clicking button, wherever it may be, just is just going to click on you sometimes. It's like, I, yeah. I just need to click on that. And it, there you go. Double click saves you from that. But the thing I want to talk about, the thing I want to bring up, why this doesn't matter at all, as much as people want to fight about it, most of you running any desktop have a mixed environment. Mm -hmm. You do. You got that mixed environment of single clicks and double clicks. And, um, you know, I look at like my desktop icons on XFC, double click, not a problem. Taskbar, your quick launchers, all of yeah. that single click. And all me and your Jill, docs. Right. Yeah. And Jill and I mm -hmm. were joking in the um, pre-show. We're like, you know what should be double click? Menus. So when you open a menu and and you go to applications, you go to that and you click on it once. We need another like a pop up menu on your desktop. And it's like one click down, one more to go. So you open the menu again and double click. See, that makes sense when you single click on those things. Yeah. So I'm going to say, like, you know, Sunar, file managers, think about that. I was just like looking around on the, my desktop here. Like, Navigation on the left side, when, when I'm going into a folder or a drive, that's all single click. But then again, going into a folder on the right side to enter it, you got to double click on that. Navigating the places. So single click purists, it's just going to be another on the long list of things that you're going to, that checklist of things to disable or enable when you install or set up KDE, right? Yeah. Is it going to drive you crazy? Yeah. Now, for me, <laughs> no. <laughs> if it's a touch, touch, I expect everything to be one click, right? Or yeah, one touch. absolutely. Yeah. On the desktop. And again, it's not even a, it's to save you from yourself type of preference. Yes. To prevent you from accidentally opening things. And yeah, single click's been a thing on KDE since forever. And I remember, uh. you know, we're talking 
you know, two decades ago going, nah, I don't like this. <laughs> but then again, you're going to write in and you're going to be like, well, that's because you're clumsy. Oh, and I'm like, I'm not going to disagree with you right there. But, <laughs> you know, the double click thing has worked for a reason and it predates Windows. That was a comment that I saw. I was like, double clicks. Because again, you know, you the love, lovable, huggable, single click sociopaths. They're like, that's only for Windows users. You do, you're being you're being trapped by the thoughts uh. of the peasant <laughs> Windows users. I'm like, man, double click predates Windows by a long shot, yeah. buddy. So yeah. what I'm saying is, Microsoft go to single click. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Make a lot of people frustrated. <laughs> You know what? Here, here we go. Apple, you do it first, then Microsoft will just copy it for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they'll some, somehow find a way to make it worse. Yes. It'll be kind of brilliant. Um, what else? Is there any other desktops that have single click by default? And again, it's not that yeah. big of a deal. It's never been a deal mm -hmm. with me and KDE because it's been easy to switch. That default mm -hmm. behavior. Is Enlightenment yeah. single click? I don't think so. No. It's a mixed I, I, environment because on the yeah, launchers, most certainly. Yeah, it's mixed. I mean, I mean, I know there's some distros that sometimes enable single click, but it's 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 in a, a desktop manager that's usually double click. So. <laughs> and I think that's what most people forget. Like you, yeah. you already have single click and you have a double click. You just don't think about it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I have set I set up Window Maker to be single click, um, but with Window Maker, it's harder to make mistakes because most of the apps, you know, you keep in the corners. So I can single click those and launch them. And sometimes I forget, you know, when I install a new version of Window Maker, I got to go in and set the settings to single click instead of double click. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe what we need to do, KDE team, hear me out. Let's do some RNG. Okay, let, let, let's just randomly split UI elements 50-50 between single and double without any feedback. <laughs> so it doesn't open the first time, click on it again. It'll be a little game. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like Minesweeper. Yeah, I, think, yeah, I don't think anybody. It, it's something to, it's something like maybe to get a little bit upset about if you just don't like that one extra thing that you got to do, but. Don't pretend for a second, because everybody who uses any <laughs> desktop, yeah. you, you have your checklist of like, I need to change this, 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 and this, because yeah. you're going to customize it for Anyways. how you use it, right? Yeah. So <laughs> as long as that's not like buried in a config file somewhere, I'm like, all right, we'll just change it back <laughs> over. Like one thing, XFCE, arguably the finest desktop manager ever created by humanity. Um, <laughs> not, no bias, none. Um, yes. Just, just stating <laughs> facts, fam. The alt key, I have to change every single time because it's like an action key to like do zooming the desktop and you use that alt key yes. in OBS yeah. for resizing. Um, I constantly have to do that. And another thing uh, XFC does out of the box, which I loathe with passion, is it does grouping, window grouping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't need one little box that tells me that I have 16 terminals open. I'm aware I have 16 terminals open. I need those 16 terminals lined at the lined top. Lined up. So yeah. I know somewhere in this vicinity <laughs> is the last one that I need for this now that this is compiled. So I can come back over here and start working on this. And it's not <laughs> obvious how to say. I have to Google it because it's so rare that I do a clean install with XFC. But it's not like a super obvious thing. So KDE people, don't panic. Unless you just want to argue on the internet, then just yeah. go for it. Go ham. Have some fun. Have some but fun. We need to maybe <laughs> think about if you're going to be running XFC, maybe this is the thing. Maybe this is finally, this is the last straw on KD. I'm not going to have this anymore, man. <laughs> I, can't, I can't handle it. Maybe you want to move over to XFC. Yes. <laughs> Just, just maybe, you know, I'm just throwing it out there, maybe a little suggestion. One thing you might notice um, with XFCE is menus, because mm -hmm. <laughs> your application menus are not the smoothest things in the world. And there have been very creative, like, launch code hacks to get around to be able to edit these menus in the past, because why you don't want to crack open a file and edit them by hand like a like unhinged person. I'm sorry, it's 2023. Those days are over. 
an application I've been using for a long, long time to fix this is Mini Libre. Mm -hmm. Nice. And it just does the job because some applications never create an entry. You don't install them and they never show up. You're like, I want that in my menu. Boom, you get it done. And then other applications, when you uninstall them, they don't remove themselves from they the menu. They don't remove them. Yeah. Done. Not a problem. <laughs> And again, XFC does a lot of things extremely goodly, but editing these menus out of the box ain't one of them. Never yeah. has been. <laughs> so you can say goodbye to all those junky menus using this. And it makes me really happy to say that there's a new version out and that's not the Starlight thing. It's over here. <laughs> Boom. Let's get to the right page. Pre-release. 2.32. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things here. All the Glade stuff, all the GTK Builder stuff, that's going to be gone. We're going to stick with tried and true known entities, Python, GTK code. A couple of new features focusing around tooltips, on-demand copy button, a couple of bug fixes, and some UI improvements along with a gang of translations. I'm really happy to see all that work, uh, and this should help get new versions and future updates. But it is one of those applications that are kind of done and i mean that in a positive way i was like yeah i've kind of figured out everything that uh everything within scope mm -hmm. of what this program needs to do so i expect maybe the next version of this will have maybe i i don't know an embedded mp3 play. no don't do that <laughs> don't do that yeah <laughs> really happy to see that so if you're using xc check out menu libre it's available in the debian repository yes yeah, and it actually also provides an editor for the launcher actions used by Unity and Plank as well. And, and so I've used it on other OSs for that reason. And yeah, like Vince says, editing menus on XFCE can be a bit of a pain. Editing menu, I don't want to hear it. Hey, last <laughs> week, last week, I can, cut to, I can cut to the tape if you <laughs> dare. If you dare fight me on this, if you say no, <laughs> editing config files is fine. I love doing it. Well, yeah, but editing menus is, is, is it's the a exact little... same thing. Well, if if you're editing uh, using the GUI, it's it's a pain in the butt. But yeah, doing uh, uh, dot files is fine. <laughs> That's what the and menus are on XFC. Yeah. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. But um, I, I was specifically talking about the dock and, and you know, setting up apps uh, to launch in the dock is a little bit, you know, time consuming. Um, in fact, I used to prefer XFCE 3 over 4 for that reason. Well, but one of the cool things about XFCE <laughs> is this tool doesn't have anything to do with the dock. Yeah, it doesn't do. This is just for menus. <laughs> yeah. This is just for your application menu. All your doc stuff yeah. in XFC, you just right click on it, you add a launcher and you add a program to it. And you're yeah, done. you add a. That's yeah. got a full GUI uh, <laughs> workflow it does. to it. Menu, mm -hmm. on the other hand, is where this comes in handy. Yeah. Thus the, the name are, Menu uh, Libre. Yeah. I still have my doc config for XFCE menus too. <laughs> I save those, back those up. That's pretty good. I mm -hmm. like it. I use it when I got to break it out for the, the occasional time. Again, you see Cruft in there. This was one of the reasons I had so, much, so many menus for applications that didn't uninstall properly or they'll just be blank and you click on them and that executable is gone because they've pieced out over time. I've uninstalled them. Mm -hmm. This is a good way if you just want to sit down and hack through that and get it done. Boom. Brilliant. But, you know, you're going to be like a lot of us. We're just going to put what you, or you have your most common mm -hmm. stuff on your launcher. Yeah. You do. I, I do, yeah. I, I know I do, but within reason, because I've seen people that get crazy with a launcher, they'll, they'll go all the way across the screen. I'm like, <laughs> really? Do you need all of that stuff immediately? Yeah. <laughs> I, I still, you know, I keep my most used applications in, in the launcher, but I like to right click on the stream, screen also to go to menus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, I'm looking at my launcher right now on this box. Uh, what do we have? We have, <laughs> we have the menu. And we click that, we bring the menu to the right of that. We have a terminal, obviously. Mm. We have get it, g edit, obviously. Yeah. Browser, email, <laughs> Steam, DaVinci Resolve, Reaper, Pavu Control, and a clock. Yes. That's yes. it. So three, <laughs> six, nine, ten, if you count the clock. Ten items. And I think I think that's nice and chunky for everything I need. But you can, you know. Make menus if you want. Put it all in the menu. Maybe we'll figure out a way to make it double click. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Don't worry about it though. All this is going to be in our show notes. So if you want to go check that out, or if you're on a Debian based system, just type in Menu Libre. 
into your uh, into apt it'll pull it right up or i'm sure there's some like gui package managers probably like synaptic yeah or an synaptic app store to work yeah i don't know if you want <laughs> if you want to see me go screaming out into the night show me something like the stores like you see like hey so many distributions have like app stores I'm like stop quit <laughs> We got Synaptic. If you, if you, if you, what do they have on um, Fedora? Um, remember the name of it? It's the equivalent of Synaptic that we have for. Debian. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> I'm so used to using DNF on Fedora. I have used it before their version of Synaptic, but I'm forgetting too. <laughs> and and I say this as from somebody trying to help more people run Linux because when their their adoption is trying to get. Not not intentionally locked in, but their understanding of how to install software is only through like whatever distribution X is Y or Z's app store. It just adds confusion. I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't install apps like that. Install apps the right way. What do you mean the right <laughs> way? I mean my way. That's what I really mean at the yeah. end of the day. Install them however you want. Okay. Now, if you were watching the video version, you might have noticed that I accidentally opened a tab with something that looked an awfully like a tab let. Yeah, yeah, you sure did, Ben, on accident. So this may be, honestly, the Linux tablet we have all been waiting for. Star Labs, which is the UK's maker of Linux-based laptops and mini PCs, has announced the compact and thin Starlight 5 tablet. And it has lots of amazing features, not to mention a black anodized aluminum chassis, which I was... I was happy about so it's going to feel really solid and it's got a 12.5 inch ips touchscreen display with 2880 by 1920 resolution and a 1610 aspect ratio i really like that in fact it's one of the reasons why i i do like that the aspect ratios on ipads for that reason and it's got a one gigahertz quad core intel alder lake n200 which turbo boosts up to 3.7 gigahertz. And it's got micro SD memory card reader, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And it, of course it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and it has two cameras, front and rear, rear, which you expect from mobile devices these days. But it, it's nice that they included that. And stereo speakers, which apparently sound very good. And the base starts at Four hundred and ninety-eight dollars, and with the keyboard included, is it is five ninety-nine, and you have your choice of many Linux distros out of the box, including Ubuntu, Zorin OS, Elementary OS, Linux Mint, Manjaro, and MX Linux. So wow, they they offer <laughs> a lot to us you, you, Linux users, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, it's not amazing. bad at all. Four hundred ninety-eight dollars uh, for a touchscreen laptop with a detachable keyboard is not a mm -hmm. bad price. Um, no, you're gonna get uh, core boot and five years of LVFS for more updates, and that's a big selling point. And they're walking out saying, "Hey, we're we're gonna make sure this is gonna stay supported for a long time." Really happy to see that, and it's got an open warranty, one year warranty, which is a little, little bit light. But on that open warranty, it's worry-free upgrades. Mm -hmm. worry-free upgrades, which means that you can take this critter apart, work on it, change stuff out, and it's not going to void your warranty. They're not going to attempt to fight you on that, which is good. Really, the only thing I got to say here, you got to get the keyboard. You got to get the keyboard, yeah, realistically, for absolutely. this. You yeah. know, 2880, 1920 resolutions, not too bad. 12-inch, okay, I can live with that. Mm -hmm. But here's a question I got for everybody at home. Leave me a comment if you know. Do we have any fully developed or at least partially developed semi-functional things that you could get away with and have an enjoyable experience, mind you, not technically they <laughs> work, hashtag, asterisk, touchscreen-oriented Linux desktops? Do we even have a good, good keyboard for the Linux desktop for touch? And by good, it has to have swipe. Yeah, it has to have sight. Well, I know uh, GNOME has come a long way for mobile. That that works really well on touch because they they have all those new swipe features now. And um, Ubuntu, um, or just the budgie desktop in general, is gotten better with that. 
And honestly, you know, because of Pine64 and all their devices, a lot of the different Linux distros uh, have gotten better with mobile. So the answer is no. No. <laughs> We're like, yeah, we have a not bunch dedicated. of options that kind of work. <laughs> I mean, if you're not picky about it, and just make sure you have a keyboard or mouse ready, you know, yeah. just in yeah. case. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, yeah, that is something to really crack. Strider brings it up is. a point, uh, probably the closest thing we've seen. And even though it's very oriented for gaming, you know, the entire experience falls apart once you're out of Steam itself. But it's the Steam Deck, the mobile oh, UI. Yeah. When you have to go into desktop mode, you realize just how much of a dumpster fire <laughs> trying to use touch. Because yeah. like, once you're out of the Steam UI and you're going into desktop mode, you're like, go get a keyboard and a mouse. You're yeah, going like absolutely. This. So <laughs> this desktop manager, window manager, whatever exists, let me know, because this is not a Linux problem. Anybody's tried to use uh, the touch interface mm -hmm. on Windows 10 or Windows 11? Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. That's miserable. I mean, yeah. I've never been angrier in my life than when I was trying <laughs> to use Windows 10 in tablet mode, and it popped up their excuse for a keyboard. I'm like, this, this thing just does not work. And, yeah. um, you know... Uh, <laughs> I use a <laughs> tablet. I use Android. That's in my, you know, I don't carry around a laptop. I, I, I carry around, you know, a reasonably powerful Android tablet. Oh, you know, I have some expectations and they're not crazy high. Again, I'm using Android. Um, that, that's what I mm -hmm. want to see that type of experience. Outside of that, um, this thing is completely fanless. So despite, you know, it, it doesn't have a fire breathing CPU. By any stretch of the yeah. in, in 200 it's more like a Celeron. Yeah. <laughs> 3.7 and uh, being fanless, uh, this thing. Yeah. Probably going to throttle immediately, too. It is. Um, yeah. Don't don't expect to be using this as your uh, to play any the latest and greatest of gaming. But I'm, I'm curious if somebody gets a hold of one, let me know because that's what I'd want to, uh, you know. And it's not locked down, though. That's the important thing. This thing has got a regular BIOS UEFI that you can get into, make your changes, play around with. And that's a big selling point. Mm -hmm. And I think the price is right, four ninety eight for the base. It is. And yeah. yeah, go go play with it. Starlabs dot systems for that. But that's not going to be our um, last mm -hmm. bit of x eighty six portability. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Micro PC, a minimal portable computer concept using an Intel base. See, x eighty six mini PC, hinged in five inch OLED display. USB-C, and here, let's just, let's just get right to the pictures here. Sorry, audio listeners. It, it's a thing. You know, it's not often we that's see cool. a pie-sized device that's x86, but, I mean, here we are. This elongated tube of computing goodness <laughs> supports a 12th gen Alder Lake and 100. Yay. Power comes from a 20,000 milliamp USB-C power bank, and it's all displayed on, which is apparently a 5-inch display. The only thing not so cyber about this deck Look at that. I mean, that looks like... <laughs> you gotta uh, be careful with it. <laughs> it's got a handle at the top, so you don't have to worry yeah. about it. Um, yeah, the one thing that's not very cyber about this deck is it's missing a keyboard, so that could be a deal breaker for some of you. It's an interesting form factor. It's like a tube. It's a tube yeah. without a case it's... on it, with a monitor on the top. Taking a look at those guts, and um, I thought it was neat. I wanted to Oh, get it, give it a mention here. How do I close the gallery? Oh, we just, oh man, that's a horrible UI. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, a nice, long, rectangular, black, small computer. And it's, you know, got a very simple design, yet it's very practical. And honestly, I like that the creator, Matt, decided to keep all input devices separate to keep the device from, you know, becoming too bulky and at the same time not limit the computer to a certain style of keyboard or controller. Um, that is one of the problems that some cyber decks have. But with this, with this, you can, you know, hook up any external full-sized or mini keyboard, mouse, or game controller you want. Which a lot of people do with portable computers and anyways. So that's cool. But more importantly, it comes with this convenient handle. You see yeah, that? You that's see how awesome. brilliant that is? No, that is like that is it's put there for a reason. It is. Yeah. So when the TSA tells you to toss it in the bin, you don't have to worry about it. You pick it right up and you toss it, then they let you through. Yeah. Because there's no way that's getting through the TSA for any reason, right? 3D yeah. printed. All the information is available on the, um, it's going to be in our show notes, a link to the project page at Hackaday.io. I just thought that was neat for us to talk about. 
Before we get out of here, though, if you like us talking about the stuff we find, mm -hmm. that's neat. Maybe consider supporting us. You can do that at LinuxGameCast.com. We'll get a support button letting you know what we do, how we do it, when we do it, and ways to kick us some coin. If that's your thing, we got Patreon, LibrePay, PayPal, you name it. We even got that cryptocurrency the kids are playing with these days. We got Amazon Wishlist. If you want to pick us up a little present, we'll read a note if you send it, and that's a threat. We got Linux GameCast merchandise. Clothe yourselves in things mm -hmm. that look better than I normally wear. Amazon storefront if you want an itemized list of everything in the studio that you can be. Guaranteed works with Linux because it's in this room with me. And of course, a humble affiliate code. And we do thank you for your support. If you are a patron, you get an extra probably like two hours of content. So if you like that, we got pre-shows for this show. We got the pre-pre-super shows and for Linux GameCast Weekly, another show that we do available in podcast format. Access to our Discord if you're a patron. Also, if you sub to us on Twitch. Try before you buy. Link that up. Come say hi. We're in the Discord having this conversation the other six days of the week. It's an interesting time. I got up this morning. We're doing AMD GPU tech support, and it's just rolling. Everybody loves a good problem oh, yeah. in there. <laughs> it's fun to watch them come together. But if you like the show, like and subscribe. Do all the fun stuff wherever you share the show. Don't spam it, but be like, hey, you know, tell one of your close friends. Not, not somebody that you, know, you don't really like. Like, hey, well, let me tell you about this. Mm -hmm. Come watch us live if you get a chance. I got a couple things I'm working on. Stick around if you are a patron. Keep an eye on that AJA, that crazy expensive capture card, the professional mm -hmm. broadcast card. I mean, I'm going to tell you all the yeah. good stuff and bad stuff about that. <laughs> That's coming up along with a professional production audio setup with Deb Deben. Yes, Debben. We're going to be doing that as well. So that's going to do it for this episode. How about? <laughs> Let's bring up some music and thank all the lovely yeah. people making the show possible. Do I have Absolutely. this? Absolutely. My Steve husband makes the show possible too. He does <laughs> does make breakfast for me in the morning <laughs> to help me prepare for the show <laughs> and have energy. Thank you to our advisors, Omegas and Artharen. Artharen is in chat. Our executive producers, Barbara, Ant, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G, Drummer, Seven. Chicago people, Super Dust Out, Empty, Blasphemia, <laughs> Sea Monsters, uh, Vera Tenuta, Justin, Frostclaw, Death Notes, <laughs> Dirty Dean, Dodger. Ah, I can't name name you all, although I want to. I can't read text that small easily. <laughs> Episode 389, ladies and gentlemen, we are done yes. with it. And... What do we do? <laughs> Until next week, everybody. We'll see you then. Bye, everyone. Love you all. <laughs> I think maybe a little bit. <laughs>